guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the MR Aero Designs Pilatus PC6 Turbo Porter. We are making some really good progress on this plane, guys. This is video number three in the series. Um, in this video, we are going to finish the surfaces, uh, rough sanding them and then we are gonna get started on the wing. Now the wing is a very, very important thing. The entire plane's very important, but there's something very important with the wing. So there's a couple important things with the wing here, guys. Now we'll get into more details once we actually get on the plans. You're taking the left plan, so the left wing plan, and you're building the right wing on that plan upside down, okay? Um, you have to switch a couple of the formers out, but that's kind of the easiest way to think about this. And I've kind of hinted at this a little bit, getting to this point. That's why we wanted to have those surfaces done so we can have the surfaces to line up to make sure that the wing is lined up properly and we're not gonna have any issues. But I will get into more details about that as we get into this. Um, the first step we're gonna do with those surfaces that were remaining from last time is we're just gonna rough sand them. We're not gonna do any, any filling or anything on them now. We'll do that once we kind of get ready for the fiberglass stage, uh, but we wanna get them fairly close. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all of the, the fuselage, the, all, all the different surfaces and everything separately, just so it makes for better video and explanation for you guys. Of course, if you're putting this plane together or a similar plane, you can do those all, all these steps uh, on each individual surface and that would work out just fine as well too. But I'm thinking about you guys and trying to make this uh, these videos flow a little bit better. So I'm not gonna show you any of the sanding steps, but I just wanted to make you aware that I do have the sanding steps to do. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start building on, I think the left wing plan, which would be the right wing that we're building on the left wing plan. So anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time finding the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell. I think that looks like a bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And last thing guys, help the channel out, give the video a thumbs up. Let's get into this. Okay guys, so I'm gonna try and explain this as quickly and easily as possible um, so that it hopefully makes sense to you. So basically if you look at the, the, the manual, it shows building the wing upside down, which is, is awesome because building it right side up wouldn't work because there is the little pieces there, um, the servo or the horns and balls and all that stuff. So we've got to build the wing upside down. Now the problem is that the plans are labeled incorrectly. So um, wing left, right? So if you look at this wing, we've got the root of the wing here, the tip of the wing over there. So this wing is laid out, if this is the left wing, it, it has to be sitting upright in order for this to be the left wing. Okay, so if you imagine, if you built this upside down, okay, and went all the way across, like it shows in the manual, well, then when you flip it over, the whole wing is going like this, and now it's the right wing. So basically the left wing plan is actually the right wing plan. Now there's a couple formers that we're gonna switch just to make things a little bit more easy. Um, I'll tell you more about those. I, I don't know them offhand, I have to look back on my notes. But anyway, so you're building the wing upside down. This is the left wing plans and it's going to end up being the right wing because we're building the wing like this. And when we flip it over, it's on the other side. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, our aileron and flap surfaces are done. Uh, everything worked out really good. They're all basically rough sanded right now. And when I say rough sanded, I mean there's still uh, a little bit of like a couple spots like right there as an example. That could use a little bit of filling. So, um, But they're rough sanded as far as fitting them on to the wings when we make the wings. 
And there's kind of a side profile there for you. Uh, worked out really well. Happy with the uh, the final outcome and I think it, uh, it looks really good. So just as an overall here, basically what you're doing is you're building the flaps and the ailerons right side up. You're building the wing upside down, therefore the right wing becomes the left and the left becomes the right. And then you have to swap the, the ribs for the flap servo uh, from right to left. So, um, but I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did or what I'm doing to get to this step. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this first wing together. Uh, if I encounter anything interesting during the wing assembly, I'll show you. But essentially we're following the exact same process that we did on the miniature surfaces, just on a bigger scale with more parts, right? So uh, I'll, I'll get portions of this done as I go through it and then I'll show you guys the, the progress as we go through. All right guys, so this is kind of obvious stuff, but I'm just gonna share it with you just in case. Uh, you decide to build one of these. So it comes with 48 inch hardwood for the main uh, beam. And of course, 48 inches is not long enough. The wing is longer than that. So obviously you need to extend all the ribs. Now it doesn't show extending the ribs on the plan labeled left, but it does, but it does show it on the plan labeled right. So that's just something again to be aware of is make sure you um, take a look at both plans, have both plans out because there might be information on the one plan that's not on the other plan, right? So if you look at this one, we've got join on all the dowels and, or all the, the ribs and it says use 48 inch wood here, use 36 inch wood there, right? So just something to be aware of. So I'm going to get those cut and join together. All right guys, a little tip time for you. So we could put these uh, pieces we want to join together in the miter box here and cut them at a 45 degree angle. Problem with that is we don't maximize the surface area. So ideally, you know, if we can get an angle like this, then we've got a lot more contact between the two pieces of wood that we're joining together. So, um, easiest way in my opinion to do that is overlap them however you want. Uh, we're going to clamp these things down and then we're just going to take a saw and saw cut like this through both pieces and of course they're going to match because you're you're making a male and female side on both pieces of wood so just make sure that they're nice and firm and they're not going to go anywhere when you saw through them. Alright guys so I've started assembling the wing as you can see here. Now I've just been getting everything dry fit in place. Um, basically one of the things that I didn't mention so far in the videos was when I pull the formers out of the the wood kits here um, any of the little nubs whether it be on the plywood formers or on the uh, balsa formers I am sanding those down before I put them into the actual plane itself so um, or onto the wing so this one hasn't been done yet this one just came out of the uh, the wood kit um, so you wouldn't want to leave those things on there, I don't think, and be something you want to take care of. So I'm just getting this dry fit and laid out. Um, so basically what we're doing here as far as the switches goes is we are putting the W4 former on this plan, okay, because we are building the, as I've talked about already, we're building the right wing on the left plan. So the W4 former is from the right wing and we're gonna put that on here, okay? And then we're gonna put the W5 former in place of the W6 former. All right, so that's how this wing's getting laid out. So you can see that previously this spar um, was, and this is of course is the left wing plan, but this spar was supposed to be balsa and that's got the hinge point for the flap on that balsa spar. So what we're doing is we're just flipping the wings around, right? So we've got W3 and W3, we've got W2 and W2, W4 right there and W6 there. Okay, so that's how we're laying out this wing. And then the right wing plan, which is gonna be the left wing, we're doing the W2 former is the same, W3 is the same, and then W4, we're doing W4L, okay, and you can see that the servo actuation is here, which lines up with the flap, and then the actual hinge point is right here, 
and this one becomes the balsa spar, uh, balsa rib, sorry, from the other plans, okay? And then we've got W7s and our W5 with, for the aileron goes there. So that's how we're switching the ring, wings around. And uh, I'm just gonna continue laying this wing up. And uh, what I'm gonna do with this wing is once I get it all laid up, I'm going to take my top rib, which I've already made and joined together right there. And we're going to insert that all the way across the top. And again, basically I'm getting this wing dry fit before we do any of the gluing, just to check and make sure that we are happy with everything. Other thing we're gonna do is the mounting for the wing pylons. So the mounting for the wing pylons, basically, let's use bent screwdriver for this. He's feeling a little bit lonely. So the mounting for the wing pylons basically goes in line with the joint between the aileron and the flap, okay? So we know our location, that's easy, but uh, we have to come up with a good way to mount that pylon. So the owner has included some blind nuts, which I'm okay with, but if those blind nuts were to strip, they're gonna be an absolute nightmare to change. That's the first issue. The other issue is I'm used to like how we ha have in our jets as an example. So typically on a, on a scale jet, they've got an actual wood dowel built into the wing. So it's actually stuck in between the top and the bottom skin. And you're basically, that allows you some, some movement on the dowel to position your pylon. So the dowels are usually, I don't know, half an inch, like the size of your finger. So you've got a little bit of play there. Now, the, the other fellow Aaron that's building this exact same plane, he's a little bit ahead of us and he came up with, came up with a really great idea. And I think that that's how we're gonna do this because it gives more freedom on not necessarily mounting position, but more or less pylon design as well too. So if I think back to when I put the ordnance kit on my F-18, what happened was all the pylons are specifically designed for that aircraft. So the 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 holes and everything going into the wing are pretty much laid out. Now these pylons that you'd have to make for this plane, I think having some flexibility in the mounting position is gonna be best, which is why we're gonna use Aaron's method. So what Aaron did was this wing rib right here, which is right on the, the joint between the, the two surfaces. So there's a sub rib here, which is the W8B, uh, which is also made of balsa. So that gets installed. And he made a little extension off the front here. So basically copied this exact uh, spar and then, or rib, and then essentially lined the entire joint between the two with some solid wood. And I think that's a really great option because you can drill and tap that anywhere along that rib, of course, depending on your pylon design. So that's what we're gonna use for the mounting of the, uh, the wing tanks. But anyways, I just thought I'd share that with you. So we're gonna continue on with this wing and I'll show you when we have some pretty solid progress. All right guys, so wing is mostly laid out and uh, next thing I need to do is cut the wing tube. Now it says right there, cut the wing tube to 13 inches. And if we do that, that leaves about 10 inches which fits inside the fuselage. So the center point's been marked on the fuselage. And what I did was come 13 inches in on each side and we've got our cut lines here. And I'm gonna uh, to hug the inside of that line because we do have a quarter inch extra on the piece that's going inside the fuselage. So we wanna make this cut as square as possible. So we are going to employ a little bit of power tool work here and use my miter saw and cut this nice and square. And there we go, now we've got our pieces. So this is going in the fuselage. If I measure this, it should be roughly 10 inches exactly. We're just slightly over, which is good. We've got a little bit to sand off. Now, one thing I'm gonna do with this wing is I am going to leave the former that mounts onto the actual, um, or flush against the fuselage uh, separate or till last and we're gonna get this wing all set in place against the fuselage. 
and then we're going to tack that in place just so we've got a nice tight fit to the uh, the fuselage all right guys so next thing i'm working on is the pylon mount so basically we've got to do a couple things here i'll show you what i did um, so i first of all we've got to build an extension on the front of the rib as i talked about so that section right there so i actually cut four of these out of balsa um, when this is done it's going to be a little bit thicker than an actual rib and i did that intentionally so we had a bit more structure there um, the extra needs to go on the outside okay so when the other rib is in here we need the space in between the ribs to be exactly the same dimension and then any ex excess or difference in thickness on the rib is going to go on to the other side okay so that's step number one i cut four of those out we're going to glue those on to the w8 ribs um, basically just get them all lined up and glue the leading edge and then i'm going to probably double those things up so that's number one number two we need to cut a piece of hardwood that goes in between the two ribs. So a couple options for that, but I think the easiest option because those ribs get spaced out uh, a quarter of an inch because the hinge actually sits inside there, um, however it fits in there. So the hinge fits inside there and the, the hinge happens to be a quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to make these sub ribs out is a quarter inch ply. So all I did was lay down a rib and tucked it as tight on the quarter inch ply as I could, traced it out. Okay, remember we're using the bottom of the, the rib, not the top. And then I just went a little bit above and just drew my line all the way across. So now when I cut this piece out of the quarter inch ply it's going to sit in between the two ribs we can glue it all together and then we'll have a nice uh, strong mounting surface for our wing pylons so i'm working on this i'm going to cut two of these out so we have a matching one for the other wing but that's how i'm solving the problem of the pylon mount all right guys pylon mount is all cut out there and here's one inserted in between the two ribs. So we've got our main rib, our W6 rib. We've got our W8B, which is right there. And we've got our extensions, which are, which are there. And we've got that double layered. So that's what I was talking about is any um, extra excess uh, rib material that you put on there. Obviously, it's got to go to the outside of the pylon mount because the pylon mount has to be consistent all the way down. So anyways, that is good, just like that. Where that's gonna go, except it's not going to fall apart. And uh, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna glue that, I think, beforehand, just so we've got the spacing all correct. So I'm gonna glue that together as an assembly, then insert it on this uh, the wing setup like this and that will be good. Uh, other thing that I forgot to point out to you was the back side of the servo mounts right there. So when you take the piece of ply that's been lasered out of here, when you take that out, you can just use that as backing for your servo. So it just gives the screw more bite to, to bite into. So I've done that on the flap servo and also the aileron servo. All right, guys, so next thing I want to do is I want to get the aileron and flap um, basically set up and all the hinges installed. Now, the reason for that is this may not show up on the camera very well, but if we put this rib where it's supposed to go, um, it's really close to that working. Right now, I've got the flap and the aileron kind of lined up. Anyway, so I just want to make sure that everything's going to line up um, with all the hinge points. You know, you don't want to put all this together and then glue your hinge points in, go to put your, your aileron and your flap on and realize that, oh crap, it doesn't fit when all you had to do was adjust those ribs just a couple of millimeters. So I think that's a really, and we'll find out, but I think that's a good way to do things um, just to get things spaced out. I also looking at the flap and um, aileron setup here, 
uh, basically we also need to have some washers in there because we need some proper spacing of the two surfaces. If we just bolt this all together like the diagram says, then the surfaces are touching and there's no way they're going to move. So uh, we do need to add some, some extra spacers in there just to, to space everything out. So. so with that being said, what I need to do is I need to finish all my hinge points. So I'm just going to do them all right now and get them done. Um, the owner of the plane already already put them together with one side and so that's that's done so basically pretty straightforward the the directions are all here so you've got 19 millimeters in between your bolt head and the actual ball joint so those are measured out at 19 millimeters uh, put them in there dry right now make sure they're sitting perfectly straight up and down okay then once they're perfectly straight up and down and i'm happy with that then what i'm going to do ugh, I feel like it keeps moving. And what I do is I take thick CA and we just put that in the entire area and just fill her up. So when you put this in, it's going to look like it's full. And we're not going to go too far out on the ball joint. But it's going to look like it's full, but it's not and it'll all settle back down and then we'll put another layer in there just to fill up the space okay and so once that's done then what I'm going to do is put the other um, thin piece of ply on there now these ply pieces were all stuck together with tape so there's some sticky stuff on there you want to try and avoid putting the sticky stuff against the balsa because it doesn't glue down very well and then we can sand this afterwards so you want to put the uh, sticky side out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some medium CA, put that all over the place, and lay it down without gluing your fingers to everything. And then what I do, take a little bit of kicker, spray it in there to cure the thick stuff, or at least cure it from, from running out. Check the fit of everything, and then once that's done, spray a bit of kicker on the rest of it. That soaks into the wood and cures everything real quick. And that's how we set the hinge points up. All right, I know you guys asked for details, so I'll show you this part as well too. So these are the main uh, ribs that butt up against the fuselage. These have already been made by the owner. Um, now we're not going to glue these in as I mentioned until later but uh, I need to get this pivot point glued in. So this one's already done and I uh, figured I would show you how to do this side. So basically we take the ball joint and this is balsa it's not plywood. So we take the ball joint and I just took my saw and basically put a bunch of cuts in the ball joint. So that was step number one. Uh, step number two Step number two, we're going to take some medium CA and we're going to fill up the ball joint so it's full right to the end. And we're just going to not glue our fingers to that. We're just going to set that aside. Okay, and then we're going to take thick CA and we're going to put it inside the pocket about halfway. Because the ball joint takes up a lot of room. Now the reason I filled up the ball joint is you don't want to have that pocket of air inside there. I think it's a better way to do it. So we're just going to slide that in. And essentially, oh, that was perfect. Um, the last one, the first one I did, I took some medium CA afterwards and just filled up the space around there, but uh, this one was pretty much bang on. Okay, so and then we've got uh, making sure the ball joints aligned. And then we just take kicker, give it a little shot, and that seals or cures the outside here and prevents anything from leaking out so 
That is extremely solid, extremely strong, and completely full of CA. All right, guys, the wing is all laid up. We've got the main ribs going all the way across the underside of the wing, which is our current top side. So what happened was I laid this entire wing out, as you've seen. I started with the wing tip rib and basically got that nice and level and square, put my main rib in there, and then just went through with this rib installed, the main hardwood one, and got the actual wing ribs pretty much set in the right spot, just roughly. And we did that all the way across the wing. And then what I did was go back and install the quarter by quarter balsa uh, main ribs going all the way across. So those are now installed. So the wing is, it's, it's loose right now, right? Nothing's been glued. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start gluing all of these three pieces in each rib. I'm probably gonna start off with just the main one and go across the wing, but I'm not going to do the ribs that have a hinge point yet. I do still need to install that secondary part, the W5B part. So I'm gonna do that before I start any gluing. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm just um, getting the wing built up except the pivot points, which I still need to be able to move those slightly to line up with the actual surfaces themselves. And what I've done here is I've installed a couple washers just to get a decent amount of spacing in between the flap and the aileron. Uh, so this flap aileron right now is exactly the same length as the plan. So if we line up this edge on the green line here and we go to the other side and line up the flap on the, the pink line, we're at exactly the right length, okay? so. Now we just need to worry about hinge positioning. All right, guys, there is all the surfaces bolted in place. So what I did, just to give you an explanation here, is I went through and glued this top rib in all the way across, making sure these are all level and in the right spot. Now, if you're like me, um, I just kind of get in a rhythm and keep going. So I just put a little piece of green tape on there just to visually remind myself that, uh, that I gotta make sure I don't glue those formers. And so I went all the way across the top. We've got our three uh, ribs that we don't want to be glued. Okay, so I did all those. The last one's not glued in, the one that uh, sits against the wing. And then what I did was I went through and glued the bottom rib just across the section there and did that all the way across. Now I did screw up and I glued this one rib that I marked with a green piece of tape. Same thing, I was just getting in the rhythm but everything actually lined up perfectly. So now with just those top and bottom hardwood ribs in place, now I can bolt up the flap and aileron and make sure everything is spaced out properly. So the whole point of this is we're pretty much fixed on our end point, our spot in the middle and our root endpoint. Okay, those are fixed dimensions. I haven't played with this uh, rib yet. But then these pivot points here, we can now adjust this rib just slightly to make sure that these line up perfectly. So that was the whole reason for this exercise and it's just gonna ensure that everything lines up after the fact and we end up with a good product is ultimately what we're, what we're looking for here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those hinge point ribs in place and I'm gonna glue the, those ribs in place on the top and bottom hardwood uh, ribs. And once that's done and I'm happy with the way the wing is all laid out, uh, I can then take the surfaces off and I can start gluing in those quarter by quarter uh, balsa ribs, which are the, the small little square ones here, right? That side, that side. So once the underside of the wing is done, I can flip the wing over, do the top side of the wing, and then all of our rib work is complete, and then we can continue on with the other little details on the wing. All right, guys, so the last uh, bit here has been done on the underside. So I have glued in all of the hinge points into the wing, and it worked out quite well. For this, I used wood glue on all of the, the surfaces, and then the, um, uh, the subformer there, I can't remember what it's called. 
anyways that I just glued with CA on the uh, the contact points but yeah this has all been wood glued in place and we have made some really good progress on this wing so far all right guys we've made some pretty dang good progress in this video covered a lot of stuff so we successfully made this wonderful wing uh, which is going to be the right wing as we've talked about many many times but uh, we've got this, uh, this wing has a really, really good start. There's still a lot left to do on this wing, but uh, it's got a really good start. Now, I'm going to be very, very detailed on the build of this wing, which is the right wing. The left wing I'm just going to, uh, going to put together. And if I encounter anything weird with that one, then I will cover it with you. But we still do have a lot of work left to do on this wing. But that is it for this episode. So we've covered a bunch of things. We've put this wing together. We still have a bunch of the detail work to do on this wing, a bunch more wood, um, mounting points for the, um, the wing support, the wing strut, things like that. And then of course, skinning this wing too. So all the next parts of this wing build will be probably the next video should cover everything that's required for this, uh, the rest of this wing. All right, guys, I really hope you're enjoying this um, build of the MR Aero Designs PC-6 Pilatus Turbo Porter aircraft. It's been a ton of fun so far, as I've mentioned, putting this thing together. And uh, it's it's really uh, brings me back to, uh, you know, quite a few years ago. So it is a pretty cool process. If you guys have any questions, make sure you list them down below. If you have any suggestions, list them down below. Have any general comments, list them down below. And uh, I love hearing the comments section from you guys and uh, hearing hearing and chatting with you as well too. I do my best to, to reply to every single comment on all of my videos. So thanks guys for tuning in to this video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. That's it guys for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.